I said, so I'm going to try and solve this question. Remember, these are the toughest questions that you're going to face. Uh, remember, one path, enthalpy change of one path is the same as enthalpy change of the other path as long as uh, the starting and the end points are the same. Now, you're being asked the enthalpy change of formation of delta HF of hydrated calcium ion is the enthalpy change of the following reaction. Uh, the following enthalpy changes are not quoted in the data booklet. What is the enthalpy change of formation of hydrated calcium ions? So what he's asking for is he's asking us to calculate the enthalpy change of which reaction? Uh, he's asking us to calculate the enthalpy change of this particular reaction. This was the enthalpy change of the, uh, it was the enthalpy change of formation of hydrated calcium ions. So he's asking us to calculate this. Now, how are we going to calculate this? The way we're going to calculate this is I'm going to make a, I'm going to write this reaction first over here. It's calcium solid plus it's aqueous. Then there's minus two electrons being subtracted. And in the products, so the thing that I have to make now is I have to make calcium two plus aqueous. So this is. So now this here is my product. So I'm also going to write my start points and my end point. So this is, I mean, I'm going to underline this. This is where I'm starting. So this is my, this is my start. And this is where I need to end. So this over here is my end point. And this is the enthalpy change that I need to figure out. Let's call that delta H1 or the delta H of F that they have said, that it's the enthalpy change of formation of hydrated calcium ions. So this is one path and I need to, what I need to do is I need to create another path. If I'm able to create this other path, I that path enthalpy changes would be the same as the enthalpy change of this. So I would be able to figure this out. So how do I create this other path? So there are a couple of equations given. If you look carefully, uh, one equation that's given is provided as this one, calcium solid changing into calcium gas. So we can do that. I mean, you can look over here, if you notice this calcium solid. So why don't we change, into, change, change that into calcium gas? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna change calcium solid to calcium gas, and I'm gonna keep the rest of the thing exact. I mean, the rest of the things are gonna remain exactly the same. So I'm not touching them. So in this path, in this tiny path, in this tiny step that I've done, I've only changed calcium solid to calcium gas. I mean, the rest of the things that remain exactly the same. So calcium solid changing into calcium gas, the enthalpy change is 177 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so I've, I've connected this equation. Now I need to do the same, repeat the same steps, and I need to sort of reach this other point. I said, let's look at the second reaction that they have given us. Tiga, let me highlight the second reaction. Now, if you look at this reaction carefully, you would notice that in this reaction, calcium two plus aqueous is being formed. So over here, I have calcium two plus aqueous. I mean, this calcium two plus aqueous. Now in this reaction, it's being formed from formed by what? By calcium two plus gas. So calcium two plus gas plus aqueous and they get together to form calcium two plus aqueous and this enthalpy change is given as minus 15, 165 kilojoules per mole. And let me drop this. So I've connected the second reaction as well. So I'm going to repeat the whole step. This is the equation that I had to figure out the enthalpy change of. So I didn't know what the enthalpy change of this reaction is. This one over here. Uh, so I'm going to create this other path. The first thing that was given, given was that uh, you can change calcium solid to calcium gas. And that is what I did. I changed it into calcium gas. And there was another reaction given where calcium two plus aqueous was being formed, but it was being formed from calcium two plus gas plus aqueous. So I did that. Calcium two plus gas plus aqueous were getting together to form calcium two plus aqueous. So I know these enthalpy changes. Now I need to create or complete this other path. 
So the last step that's left now is I just need to complete the last step. This step. And he hasn't given us given me any other information. Now, if you have a look carefully at this last step, I mean, there's no other step given. There's no other enthalpy change given. If you look carefully over here, the only thing that's happening is nothing is happening to Aquas. I mean, Aquas is not playing a role. If something remains completely unchanged, that means it's doing absolutely nothing in the reaction. So over here, this Aquas term does exactly nothing. What's actually happening is that there's a gaseous calcium atom and it's you're subtracting two electrons to form a calcium two plus ion. Now, if you remember your atomic structure, this is the first plus the second ionization energy of calcium. I mean, it's, if you look at this step carefully, it's only a gaseous calcium atom changing into a calcium two plus ion. So that means uh, two electrons are being removed and your data booklet has these ionization energies. If you, if I look at the, if I open the data booklet, one second. So if I open the data booklet, uh, you will notice that uh, the data booklet has a section where ionization energies are given or the energy need, needed to remove electrons. So going down, this is where, if you can see clearly, uh, these are the first, second, third, and fourth ionization energies of uh, different elements. Uh, now we need to make it calcium two plus. So calcium must be given somewhere over here. Uh, this is where calcium is. And removing the first electron requires 590, removing the second electron uh, requires 1150. So we're going to write that down, that it's going to be 590 plus 1150. So that's how you're going to remove uh, two electrons. Is this step clear to everyone, Rida, Hiba, uh, Sanjida, is this clear? Yes or no? Okay, now, now the thing is, it's going to be, uh, I mean, I've, I've completed this other path now. What I just need to do now is, what I just need to do now is that uh, enthalpy changes of two parts are going to be the same. So this is path number one. And this over here is my path number two. So that means that, uh, what does that mean? That means uh, path number one, which is delta HF. I mean, this is the one that we need to calculate. So I'm going to do my working over here. So delta HF is basically equal to what it's, I mean, you have to go from this point to this point, then this point, then this point. So it's going to be 177. Then it's uh, 590 plus 1150. Remember, uh, if you're going along the arrows, you don't have to change sign. And the last one is minus 1565. If, if, if you're going in the opposite direction to the arrow, remember to change the sign. Okay, right now, I think uh, we, we are going along the arrows. Uh, so this is going to give me the enthalpy change value. So uh, quickly on my calculator, I'm going to do just that. So it's a uh, 170 plus 590 plus 1150, and then it's minus 1565. And the answer that I get is 345, which is not given actually. As I said, the, um, it's not actually 170. This first value was actually 177. So let me. Remember, own a very the whole problem with this is even if you do all the entire question properly, just one tiny mistake and you get the answer wrong. TK, anyways, our answer was off by seven because uh, uh, so it was one seventy seven, so my value would be three fifty two. I says this question clear to everyone? Yes or no? Clear. Plus, also remember that uh, 
there are actually many different ways of doing uh, uh, these hair cycle questions. Uh, the reason we are studying this one is, and I also remember, uh, if you get 10 questions on energetics, uh, there's probably only, there's a very small probability of actually getting questions like these. Most of the time, there's a simple formula, which we're going to study just after this, that solves most of the questions. But the questions that are in this worksheet, for this, you have to come, make these uh, hair cycle equations. I said, anyways, uh, I think we did this in the last time. Do you remember doing this question in the last class? Sanjita, did we do this question in the last class? Okay, so uh, we're going to do this question now. Uh, again, uh, this question as well, there's no shortcut to it. You have to make a you have to make a complete hair cycle for this. So let's quickly start. Uh, this is the enthalpy change we need to figure out. So this is my starting point, right? And this is where I need to go. So this is path number one. So start, and I'm going to end over here. Now, I don't know what the path, what the enthalpy change is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and figure out and try and make another path and try and figure out the enthalpy changes of this other path. So how do we start? Where do we start? Uh, I'm going to start with, if you notice over here, there's uh, this there's carbon monoxide. And that carbon monoxide can be changed into carbon dioxide. And the enthalpy change is minus 283. So do you see carbon monoxide anywhere? So there is carbon monoxide over here. So why don't we change that carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide? Uh, remember to take care of the of the states. States are very important. As I'm, I'm not going to touch water. Water remains as it is. It's water in gaseous form. Right? Let me circle that. So what did I do? I, I'm, I'm just linking up the first equation. I had carbon monoxide over here, and I changed it into carbon dioxide. So carbon monoxide over here got changed into carbon dioxide. Nothing happened to water over here. So it's only carbon monoxide changing to carbon dioxide, and the enthalpy change for that step is minus 283. So that is the amount of energy that's going to be released if you do that. That's the next one. So we're done with the first equation. I'm going to cut it out. I've connected it. What about the second equation? There's H2, hydrogen. And I can change it into liquid water. And the value is minus 286. That's the amount of energy that's going to be released. So do I have H2 anywhere? So there is hydrogen. So why don't we change that hydrogen into H2O liquid? D don't do anything with carbon dioxide gas. Leave it as it is. But why don't we change the H2 gas into H2O liquid? Right? And to do that, okay, step may, in this step, if you focus on this step, I, the only thing I changed was that H2 gas has been changed into H2O liquid. And the enthalpy change for that step is minus 286. So why don't we write minus 286 next to it? That's the amount of energy that's going to be released or absorbed. Last step, uh, H2O gas can be changed into H2O liquid. So do we have H2O gas? We have H2O gas over here. So why don't we change H2O gas into H2O liquid? I mean, this, I mean, if we, have, we now have a cycle. I mean, if you look at this path, I mean, this path over here, nothing is happening to carbon dioxide gas. There was carbon dioxide gas over here, and there's carbon dioxide gas over here as well. Uh, but the only thing that's happening is water in gaseous state is changing into water in liquid state, and the enthalpy change for that is minus 44. So my other path is now complete. The only thing I need to do now is find the enthalpy change of this other path. Okay, so this other path is complete. So why don't we start adding up? This path would be the same as this path. So the enthalpy change of this, this question mark would be this one. Add them up. 
it's going to be go from here to here. That's minus 286. I said, then I have to go from this point to this point. So I have to go in the opposite direction to the arrow. So this minus 44 should change into plus 44. Like if I, I mean, the arrow should not be in this direction. I want to go in that direction. So I'm going to change the sign of the arrow or the value. And when I reach this point, I need to go here. So it's going to be, this arrow needs to change direction as well. I need to go upwards. So it's going to be plus 283. Okay, so this is my path number two. And this was my path number one. Path number one and path number two are exactly the same because uh, you reach the same endpoint. Uh, what is the answer? What is the value that you're going to get? I think this would be minus three plus 44. And this would come out to be equal to plus 41. So answer number C is going to C is going to be the correct answer. I said, why is it plus 44? Uh, the reason it's plus 44 is, okay, it's, let me clear this from the middle. A reason it's plus 44 is, okay, guess we're going in this direction, right? TK, we have to, this is my start point, this is my end point. I told you, okay, uh, I mean, the arrow was originally, where, where was the arrow pointing originally? It was water in gaseous state changing into water in liquid state. So water was gaseous over here and water was liquid over here. So the arrow was pointing actually going in that direction. But I don't want to go in that direction. My starting point is here. I have to go from this point to this point, then from this point to this point. So I have to go in the opposite direction to the arrow. I'm, I'm going from liquid water to, to gaseous water. So if I if I go in the opposite direction to the arrow, then the sign would change. Rita, is this clear? Okay. All, always, always remember uh, that over here as well, there was, uh, you had to change the sign. Why? Because uh, the, the minus 283 was carbon monoxide changing into carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide changing into carbon dioxide. But I'm going in the opposite direction. I'm going, I'm trying to make carbon monoxide. So if I'm going in the opposite direction, the sign would change. I say, is this question clear? So we can proceed with another question. Heba, is this clear? Sanjida, clear? Any questions about this? Okay. So let's try and do another question. Now this question, uh, he's asking, I mean, he's given you two reactions and the enthalpy changes are provided. You're being asked, what is the standard enthalpy change of formation of uh, iodine trichloride ICL3? So first thing, uh, he's asking me to calculate the enthalpy change the standard enthalpy change of formation. What was the definition of the standard enthalpy change of formation? It was uh, the definition of this thing was that's, that it's the energy released or absorbed when one mole of a substance is formed. So I need to form this one mole. So one mole of substance was formed from what? From its elements, constituent elements. The elements are iodine and chlorine and the elements must be in the standard state so this one was solid and this one was gas and this has to be one mole so for that this should be three by two and this should be half okay this is this is what enthalpy change of formation is I mean, we can have a look at the definitions uh, and we can quickly revise just one second. It's opening or not. I don't think. So the definition of enthalpy change of formation was that one mole of a substance must be formed from its elements, right? The elements are iodine and chlorine and the elements must be in the standard state. Is this part clear? 
Yes or no, is this clear? One second. That's so, a So we need to figure out the enthalpy change of this reaction. And let's, I'm going to give it a value. Uh, I'm going to call it X. I mean, this is the enthalpy change I need to figure out, right? Right delta H or right X, same thing. Uh, the, now, just to make my make things a little easier, I would like to actually get rid of fractions because it's kind of hard to uh, deal with fractions. So just to get rid of the fractions, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by two. So if I multiply the whole thing by two, this would uh, this would become one. This over here would become uh, three, and this over here would become two. Taken just to get rid of the fractions. So the enthalpy change would double as well. Okay, uh, previously we were trying to make one mole of ICL3. Now I'm actually trying to make two moles of ICL3. So the amount of energy that's going to be released or absorbed, it's going to be double. Okay, the only reason I'm doing that is I don't want fractions. I mean, they may, they've confused me. I mean, you could have done without, without actually doing this. But for me personally, I don't like fractions. So I, I've just doubled everything. Uh, things would be easier now. What I just need to do is, do is, this is my starting point. And this is where I need to end up. And I need to figure out what the enthalpy change is, which is 2x right now. So I need to create this other path. Right? And this other path would be created by the equations that are given to me. So let's start creating this other path. This other path would be I'm going to look for, I'm going to do this thing first. Iodine solid changing into iodine gas. I mean, it's it's easy. I mean, there's iodine solid. Why don't we change it into iodine gas? I'm not going to do anything with chlorine. That is as it is. Okay, not doing anything to disturb chlorine. I said, so and it's Cl2. So the enthalpy change for this is plus 38, right? So nothing was done, only iodine solid was changed into iodine gas. Now, what about this other path? Now, if you look carefully, I have iodine gas and three Cl2 gas, so I do have that. And I can make two ICL3 solid. So it's this reaction over here. But look carefully, iodine gas, there's iodine gas, 3Cl2 gas, there's 3Cl2 gas. They're going to react together to form two ICL3 solids. So why don't they form two ICL3 solids? So this path is going to be minus 214. Achha, is, this, is this clear so far? Yes or no, is this clear? So now, I mean, now we've pretty much done, uh, we've solved the question. Uh, so one path is equal to the other path. I just need to find the value of X. So this path, this is path number one. As long as my starting and end points are the same, this is my other path. So that means 2X is equal to what? Uh, 2X would be equal to plus 38. And it would be equal to minus 214. I don't need to change the sign of anything uh, because I'm not going in the opposite direction to the arrow. So it's just going to be minus 214. And we can get rid of two and divide this entire thing by two. And if I use my calcula calculator to solve this, it's going to be it's going to be 38 minus 214. Wait a second. So with 38 minus 214. And the whole thing minus 176 should be divided by divided by 2. And I get minus 88. So B is going to be my answer to this question. I said then <coughs> uh, 
just one second, let me quickly. I said, let's try a, a more difficult uh, question. And this first one is very easy. Uh, what did we study? If the starting and the end point are the same, the enthalpy change of a reaction is exactly the same. So they've, they've actually drawn a Hess cycle. And it's a hypothetical Hess cycle. R is changing into S, S is changing into U, T is changing into U. So, so they've drawn a cycle. And they're saying the enthalpy change for the transformation U to R. So you're starting at U and you want to go to R. I mean, the two parts, the two parts, you go from this part, this side, or you go from this point. Uh, both sides would have the same enthalpy change, uh, except you can't use this side because this enthalpy change is not provided. So you can't really, you can't really go in this direction, uh, but you can use the other path. So what you have to do is, what you have to do is uh, simply, As I simply follow this path. Now you're going in the opposite direction to the arrow. So it's going to be minus uh, 92 and plus 134. TK, why? Because uh, you're going in the opposite direction to the arrow. Go from U to S, that's minus 92. Go from S to R, that's going to be plus 134. And if you solve this, it's going to come out to be, I think it's going to come out to be 42. So this one, this one is 42. Next one is T to S is endothermic. So T to S. Now you, you start at T. The only route that's available is you go from this point to this point, T to S. So that means you go in this direction, that's minus 75. And then from U, you can go to S. So, but this arrow has to change. It's going to be minus 92. So this would be minus 92 and both values are negative. So it is going to be exothermic. Just hold on one second. Acha, so is this part clear? Sanjida, Hiba, Rida, is this clear? As okay, this one is easy. As a second, if the second one is wrong, the third one is also wrong. We, can, we, we don't really worry. We don't need to worry about this. I said this one is slightly difficult. Uh, firstly, I'm going to tell you what this is. This is cyclopropane. I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just draw cyclopropane. Cyclopropane is there are three carbon atoms arranged in a cyclic manner, and they have all these hydrogens. Uh, bonded to them. So this is cyclopropane. I said, now you, what are you given? You're given, you're given that the enthalpy change for formation of cyclopropane is given. So what is the enthalpy change of formation of cyclopropane? What you have to do is you have to form, and I'm going to do this over here. Uh, I said, so you want, you have to form cyclopropane one mole. Okay, so this should be one mole. From what? From its elements. The elements are uh, carbon, and carbon should be in standard state, so that's solid. The other element is hydrogen, so that's uh, H2, and that is usually in gaseous state, so it's going to be three H2 and three carbons, right? So I, I and I have this value. It's 53.3. .3. So this value is given, right? So this is enthalpy change of formation of cyclopropane. One mole of cyclopropane getting formed from its uh, getting formed from its constituent elements, which are carbon and hydrogen. What else is given? They've given the enthalpy change of atomization of graphite. Graphite is carbon, and what is the enthalpy change of atomization? Atomization is. So, I'm going to create another path. I mean, this. So this over here, let me erase this. So this over here, and I know the value, and they've given you enthalpy of atomization of carbon. So let's make carbon 
into gaseous atoms and leave H2 as it is. So I'm going to leave H2 in gaseous state. I'm not touching H2. The only thing I've done is I've done atomization of graphite. That solid carbon has been changed into gaseous carbon atoms and the value for that, doing that is plus 717. But I'm, that was for one mole. Enthalpy of atomization of graphite is for one mole of graphite. I have three moles of carbon, so I'm going to multiply this by three. I said, then what are you given? You're given the bond enthalpy of HH. So why don't we, I mean, there's an H2 molecule. So why don't we break the HH bond? So I'm going to just do that. I'm not, I'm not going to touch carbon. Carbon is already atomized. Leave it as it is. I'm going to break these HH bonds. So if I break them, I'm going to get six hydrogen atoms in gaseous state. So I've broken three HH bonds have been broken in this step. I mean, you had three H2 molecules and I broke all those bonds. So the value is 436 into three. And it's going to be positive because I'm breaking bonds. So I've reached this point now. Now, when I have atoms, what I can do is I can put the atoms together to form this thing over here. So how many bonds do I need to make? I mean, I've broken all the bonds. So how many bonds do I need to make between the atoms? I need to make uh, a carbon-carbon bond, a carbon-carbon, another bond. So I need to make three carbon-carbon bonds. Uh, and that is what they've asked me to find out. They've asked me to find out the carbon-carbon bond energy. But if I want to make, if I have these atoms and I want to make this molecule, I need to make uh, six carbon-hydrogen bonds as well. Now this value is provided. The carbon hydrogen bond energy is given as 410 over here. So this one would be six times 410. So my Hess cycle is complete. I mean, they gave me enthalpy of formation first for making cyclopropane from its elements in the standard state. So I, I had that value. Uh, they, they told me what the value for atomization of carbon was. So I atomized carbon solid into gaseous carbon and it was 717 times three. Or uske baad, uh, the other thing that I was given was that they told me that uh, the HH bond enthalpy was given. So I broke all those HH bonds. I got these atoms. And then I had to make this molecule to complete the cycle. So the gaseous carbons and the gaseous hydrogen atoms, they combined to form this molecule. And uh, when they did that, uh, three carbon-carbon bonds had to be formed and three six carbon-hydrogen bonds had to be formed. We're going to apply the Hess law now, which is path one should be equal to path number two. So start solving it. It's, it means 53.3 should be equal to a lot of things. It's going to be 717 into 3. What else? Uh, 436 times 3. Plus 6 into 410. And then it's 3 into carbon carbon bond energy. So we can, I mean, all of them are getting added up. So you can solve and quickly. Tell me what the answer is. Is this question clear? Yes or no, is this clear? Tia, just remember, it's going to be very hard to solve these questions. Uh, you need to practice a lot. Tia, try and learn uh, how to make these uh, his cycles. Tia, I'm going to post this worksheet as well. The same one. Uh, get, tell me what the answer is first. Quickly calculate this and give me the value. What is the carbon carbon bond energy equal to?
anyone did Hiba Rida Sanjida try and tell me what the answer is. See, minus 1955 is definitely because that's not an option. Uh, did we make any mistakes? Asani, we, we made a huge mistake. I'll, I'll tell you where the mistake is. Uh, the mistake is this part. I mean, we made a huge mistake. Uh, and that is, this is bond formation, right? So again, just one mistake in the whole question is wrong, right? I mean, this part is bond formation. Bond formation is always exothermic. So, so the signs of these energies uh, when bonds are being formed is always negative. Okay, so uh, this thing over here should have been negative. And 3cc should have been negative as well. They, they're going to be exothermic. So, I mean, this part is wrong. This should be negative And this should be negative as well. Is this point clear? So, so, the, so we forgot this part that when you're forming gaseous atoms, when they're forming bonds, uh, the enthalpy changes are exothermic. So uh, 410 would have been exothermic. So we're going to continue with this uh, and we're going to uh, do the formulas now. Formulas are very easy and they're very easy. But the questions that we did, these questions had no shortcut. The only way these questions had to be solved was by making his cycles. So I'll post this as an assignment in Google Classroom. Okay, take care. Laugh is. Mama, mama, like.